Um, welcome back to the, our discussion on uh, the Western Balkans, the contemporary situation in the Western Balkans uh, in the context of the Delphi Economic Forum. And we have today the pleasure to have with us Mr. Milorad Dodik. He's the chairman of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Dobrodosa uh, Uatinu. Welcome to Athens, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Dodik, Mr. Chairman, last year we, we marked the 25th anniversary of the end of the war in Bosnia. And despite some progress in the country, I think we would all agree that uh, <coughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina lags behind significantly its neighbors uh, when it comes to the declared foreign policy goal of the country to join the European Union. Now, what do you uh, think have been the main achievements of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the accession uh, process? What is the current situation, the current state of play in the accession process? And what are, in your view, the challenges for the future? Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina Bosnia-Herzegovina is on its European path. We nonetheless have certain economic and political parameters that we need to work on, and we're doing everything we can in order to go according to plan, i.e. to comply with what is required by the European Union to not just join the EU, but also bearing in mind our internal condition. Bosnia-Herzegovina has a systemic mistake in terms of its being. This is pertinent to the current situation. Since the Dayton Agreement, Bosnia-Herzegovina has been falling apart. It all started back then. There are some who think that maybe Bosnia and Herzegovina should be more unified, that this should be one single state. There are others, third parties, who think that we must do everything we can for what's there now, for the current degree of autonomy. And there are others, too, that think it should decompose, it should be taken apart to solve the issue. There's no country the world over that is acting as a global player, player who doesn't have thoughts about it. So it's, it's been 25 years since the war ended, indeed, but for the past 25 years, there's been a high representative who stands for the global community who's abusing their powers. This person has imposed certain reforms, and now Bosnia-Herzegovina, because of those attitudes and stances, is thought by many as a lost country. Because of that, many believe, as we speak, that there's no fundamental agreement amidst the very country. So there are people who think that we fail to agree in terms of our European perspective. This is a prevalent opinion. As it turns out, or it seems that, since the Dayton agreements, there is a thought suggesting that these Dayton agreements have to be there and still be updated. Today, we believe that there are double, double standards. I mean, there's North Macedonia, it's going to start its succession negotiation. There's mention of us decentralizing the police. In Bosnia-Herzegovina, the effort has been made to do away with the police as such. And then there's also the issue of recognizing us as an independent state. The recognition is thought of as a great success on the part of uh, the international community. We are trying to defend our status and we are in favor of autonomy. There's no plan for a secession. So there's no intention of us seceding from the Serbian Republic, but there is the so-called letter of the Dayton Agreement, so there's a trend in terms of enforcing the letter and not the spirit of the Dayton Agreement. The international representative
quantitative has created a much worse situation compared to what things were like 10 years ago. Bosnia-Herzegovina is determined, determined to still try to enforce the 14 recommendations of the European Union, but we can't fail but see certain things. For instance, the fact that the enlargement processes of the EU seem to have lost and it seems to have slowed down. The previous speaker also mentioned that the fact that the momentum of the enlargement process has been lost. We are not sure that there is a place for us, and we see that certain European member states uh, wish to postpone the enlargement. There are others who don't wish to postpone the enlargement, but nonetheless, what's a prerequisite is uh, uh, the, the uh, opinion of all coinciding. And then again, there's also the case of North Macedonia and Albania, who have proceeded with many reforms, but still they're waiting. So we are at the end of the line, and that's the problem as far as we are concerned. And in the meantime, the rules have changed. And the preconditions for us joining have changed too, and these are tough preconditions. And so the 16 candidates or those countries that are waiting for a negotiation process to start, unfortunately, because of the prerequisites becoming harder, won't be able to uh, do it, to make it. And we are lost, so it's even harder for us. What needs to be done in order for this to be sorted out would be first, in terms of Bosnia and Herzegovina sorting its uh, fiscal and financial situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the global community. What I mostly have in mind is the US and the European Union. So, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we are not allowed to talk about anything else or refer to anything else but Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, the global community, the international community, won't let us talk about anything else but Bosnia Herzegovina. They won't let us discuss any other prospects or options, especially us living there. So quite often, that's why the international community had its representatives replaced every four years. And the new representatives were always enthusiastic about uh, managing to do what failed to happen in 1995. So they are still trying to centralize us and possibly do away with the autonomy we have. So everywhere and in everything, there's this single issue cropping up every time. The presidency consists of three members. We have to have a Serbian representative, a Croat, and a Muslim representative. Now, when you have such a setup, you have to have the respective communities elect their representatives for three mandates now, bearing in mind that the number of Croats has dropped, and in the meantime, the number of Muslims have in, has increased, about 200,000 Muslims have been voting in favor of the Croat representative. They want to have them represent them. And so now the fundamental issue for Bosnia-Herzegovina is the clash between the Croats and the Muslims in terms of electing new members to the presidency, to the board. The Croats don't want to have a member represent them who's not representative of them. For the past 3.5 years in our federation, we don't have a new government. And we have to have a government. The government must be put together with the collaboration of Croats and Muslims. All of that is creating Problems. So I would like us to focus a bit more on the socio-economic situation in the country. I, I, I get your point about uh, centralization uh, or the efforts for the centralization of the country, but at the same time, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a, is a, is a poor country. The, its GDP is pretty much a GDP of a Greek city. It has uh, six, 13, 14 governments. The only other country, federal country in Europe that has 16 governments is, is Germany. And I think Germany has maybe 1,000 times bigger economy than, than Bosnia. But anyway, uh, let, me, let me ask you about the socioeconomic situation in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is very precarious. Um, I have pulled some numbers here for our audience. Of course, you're very well aware of, of these numbers. but. Uh, for those of us who are not following the, um, uh, the situation in Bosnia so closely. Uh, according to a recent study, uh, 
uh, of young people between the age of 14 and 29, 61% of, of these young people want to emigrate from Bosnia. Uh, in the years 2014 to 2018, five years, Germany has received more than 120,000 people, citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina, as emigrants, and more than 50,000 50, of them stayed in Germany permanently. So the country is losing young people and is losing people with, uh, with knowledge, with, with dynamism, with, with degrees that would uh, help the regeneration of, of the economy of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, uh, and there is also some data from the World Economic Forum that shows that uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is at the bottom of the list in the ranking of the countries and their efforts to keep the young people and the more educated people in the country. I think uh, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is in, in place 135 out of 137 um, uh, countries that are ranked. So clearly, the political uh, leaderships in the country, including your leadership, of course, uh, maybe are not doing something right if all these young people want to leave Bosnia and Herzegovina because of unemployment, corruption, and so on and so forth. I want to ask you for your vision, socioeconomic vision for the future. What will you do, uh, you and your colleagues uh, in the rest of the country and in Sarajevo, of course, do differently in the near future so that the situation changes when it comes to unemployment, corruption, and people will not want to emigrate from Bosnia anymore. Nema naravno lakih rješenja da postoje, ona bi se već pojavila. Dakle, nema There's no such thing as an easy solution, of course. There are local politicians, but there's also the international element, so maybe you should address this question to the international community. We have three foreign guests at the level of our constitutional, constitutional court, and they're coming up with systemic solutions that have proven to be wrong. There's also the issue of our constitution as such, and the letter of the constitution is exactly, is totally different compared to the practice of the constitution in our country. There is absolute instability. This is a place that was undeveloped, not underdeveloped, as a part of the former Yugoslavia. So apparently federal funds were used. And uh, still, because of the war, we became poorer. Now there's the pandemic that has also dealt a blow to us. So we are suffering from further economic and financial problems because of the pandemic, and there's further poverty. There's no single economy in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Maybe your statistical data, the figures you mentioned, are summing up the situation, but there's no such thing as a single indicator for Bosnia and Herzegovina because all the economic responsibilities and roles are in the hands of uh, different people. And there's the Serbian Republic, the Republic of Serbia, actually. Has suffered a blow, so the Serbian Republic's GDP has fallen by 2.8. Other, other um, countries within uh, the uh, former federation have suffered a bigger uh, drop in the GDP. Now the GDP seems to be improving. The Republic of Serbia has an average uh, salary of 200 euro per month as we speak. I think that given the situation, this is a huge success, no matter what. And then there's corruption. There's corruption in every single system, including Bosnia and Herzegovina's system, but we don't have more corruption than others have elsewhere. The crime rate in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also in the Republic of Serbia is smaller compared to other countries, many other countries for that matter. In terms of security and safety, I think the situation is good. 
The fact that young people are leaving the country, this is a tradition. It's always been there. There's always been an increased number of young people leaving the country through time. And this is not typical of, nor does it characterize solely Bosnia and Herzegovina. I think Greece is, going, is also going through that. And Croatia sees its young people leave it. I believe that many countries see their youth uh, leave Bulgaria, Romania, too. A few years ago, I was the prime minister at the time, and I was asking I was asking that people be let in to be uh, eventually uh, to establish themselves eventually in Germany. Germany was saying no the time later they opened their gates. I think people are watching on their TV sets what life is like in neighboring states and in the meantime societies are changing. And there's also a movement, a populist movement, claiming that we are doing nothing at all, but there's not much we can do. There's not much we can do um, unless Germany helps. A big number of refugees and migrants are coming over to Europe. And Europe is guarding its borders. Apparently, this is the end of the statement. Thank you very much, says the moderator. <laughs>